All right, we're here with Will Lopes. He's the Chief Executive Officer of Catapult. Will, I appreciate you coming on the program. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. I'm, I'm glad to, excited to be here. Yeah, so tell me, what. so what is your background and how did you get involved with Catapult before we get into all the nuts and bolts with the, what you guys do in the XFL? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I spent about 20 years before joining Catapult uh, working for a company called Audible um, that makes uh, digital audiobooks. We spend uh, after selling that company to Amazon, I spent about 10 years working inside Amazon um, it, within Audible and also within other pr parts of Amazon, uh, including Kindle and Prime and a few other, including the uh, famous Amazon uh, Fire Phone, which is no longer. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I think uh, I actually got connected through a former colleague at, of Amazon uh, to connect with Catapult. And I just became fascinated what they were doing here. They had pioneered, you know, the wearable industry uh, in sports. Uh, they had pioneered the video analysis environment in sports. Um, and they were supporting just fantastic companies and teams across the, the world. Um, and and what really, quite honestly, Mark, what what attracted me most to the, the to the company and to the industry was that what we were trying to do inside Catapult is figure out how to measure human performance. Um, and as you could imagine, that is no easy task. Mm, uh, yeah. And so, and, you know, it's been a, a fantastic evolution. I joined just three months before pandemic started. And so <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long ride, and, 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 but an exciting one, to, nonetheless. So what, do, what is Catapult Sports for the yeah, regular so, fan out there? Yeah, so we are the, the leading sports analytics platform, um, in, particularly in the elite sports uh, world. Um, you can think of us as having two core products. Uh, we have a video analysis products that helps coaching make better real-time decisions. And so what they do is they will review game um, opponents as well as their own and training and make modifications to their tactics as they watch. They'll use that program as well to look at, you know, scouting uh, opportunities, talent identification. Uh, and then the second and the core and, and, and sort of, you know, the heart of our solution here is an athlete monitoring system. Um, and think of that as a wearable device that athletes will typically have on their torso. You might have seen an athlete sometimes take their jersey off and they have sort of a compression garment on. Mm -hmm. They have a device in the back and that's our device. Um, and what that device is doing is trying to capture data and basically give objective uh, data points to the training staff to understand, you know, the exertion levels of the athlete. Um, and so they'll combine tactics as well as, you know, uh, uh, human performance uh, metrics to understand, am I working my athlete too much? Uh, are they at peak performance? Uh, am I making calls on the field that maybe I shouldn't because the athlete is a bit too tired? Uh, so the combination of those two is really what Catapult is. Um, and I think, as I mentioned, you know, we support, um, over 40 sports across the world. Um, you know, we, every NFL team is a client of ours, <laughs> you know, the, the, everybody in the, the power five, um, you know, the NCAA is in, in American football here, um, as well as, you know, NHL, ice hockey, uh, sorry, NHL, NBA, um, you know, big European leagues, um, in soccer, um, you know, Bundesliga, Premier League, uh, and the like. So this, is this something that they wear during practice or is it just kind of like, hey, we're going to do a training session? Like, how does that work? Yeah, so so the wearables typically get worn in practice. Uh, some leagues will allow for teams to use them in game as well. So they're oh. in practice, what they're trying to do is understand, you know, how do I keep that athlete by not overworking them, but also making sure that I'm not underworking them, right? So how do I keep them a peak performance? And it will change throughout the season, right? So preseason – you want to see that athlete kind of come up to a, a new level of exertion and kind of maintain that rate. And then through the season, you're kind of training depending on, you know, what la yesterday you did, how hard the game was, uh, and so on. So they'll wear them in training as well as in game. So is it track – Is what what exactly is it is it tracking the, this vest? It's, it, you know, we've seen the XFL partner with Breakaway Data, and it's more of like this is how fast they did the, the cone drill – uh, you know, that kind of thing. But what, what kind of data is this tracking? Yeah, so it basically it's tracking, you know, all, all of the things that you, you think breakaway data is is capturing. Typically, they're using our data to kind of do some analysis on top of that. Uh, but it's capturing, you know, uh, obviously movements and position in the field. Uh, it's capturing inertial sensors. So, you know, so that you understand 
uh, change of direction, the speed and delta of change in direction is really important depending on the position. Um, you're also capturing uh, motion and, and, and impact data. So how hard is somebody, you know, uh, entering into a line, for example, uh, would be a you know important component, uh, and it's also capturing Z uh, axis, right? So, so we capture about, um, I think, a little over, uh, you know, a little under a thousand data points uh, from a single athlete, uh, you know, and, and we do about a hundred hertz, uh, so about a hundred uh, data points per second. Um, and what is coming back is then being put into, you know, an, a, a, a computer. Or, or in some cases in the cloud, and then it's actually using algorithms to calculate core metrics, right? So exertion being probably the most important uh, in in sports. So you know if I if I know for example you know what it takes for an athlete to move um, to do a hundred you know hundred yard dash, um, and we're trying to understand what the exertion level are between you know athlete A and athlete B, and also between athlete A against themselves from a previous week or earlier in the season or how they go throughout the week. So is this something where like coaches get the analysis at the end and it's like, Hey, you know, Fred, you know, you, you're, you're only going at 50% speed in practice, like what's going on or like how that's is exactly it right. It, it's a great example, right? So, so typically what a coaching staff will do post-practice, they're looking for a couple of things. Uh, the first is, you know, how hard did we work in this training session? Right. So I want to tell the head coach, Hey, you know, actually, this drill we did today, um, actually, everybody was at you know at ninety percent of their peak. So tomorrow we may want to rest them a little bit or do a you know lighter drill. Um, so that's one component. The second component is how hard are you working uh, in comparison to how hard you work against the game, right? So you may be doing you know a certain level of burst runs in a game, but then in in, in the drill or in the training session. You might be doing 40, 30 percent of that uh, burst. And, you know, and then that may be, you know, by choice. I, I know I'm trying to rest myself um, uh -huh. but more importantly, also maybe by injury. Right. So you may have a hamstring uh, that's starting to go and, you know, I'm starting to you know take a step back. Um, and so what, what we, we typically help is create sort of what, you know, was subjective in the past. Right. So in the past, you might say, hey, I think the athlete looks a little slower than usual um or you know maybe we worked a little hard uh yesterday let's less rest um now we're actually giving that objective components to it right so we could actually say no actually you didn't work them that hard or you are working them that hard and, and, it, and it really has revolutionized how coaching staffs train athletes you know pre-season you know in season and then postseason right I, I, the you know the the story i always uh, tell folks is you know when I was in high school and I played football, you know, my, my coaching, my, my coach style was basically, we're going to work you until you're throwing up in the summer camp. Mm -hmm. And when you're, and when you're, you know, and that's when we know you're in peak condition, right? Yeah. <laughs> Things have that's, changed yeah. a lot. And yeah, yeah, a little I bit. think it's, it's really using this data to understand how do we improve. Now, what's really cool, Mark, is that once you start to combine that with video, um, it actually gives it a whole different aspect to the tactics of the game as well, right? And so you could imagine, hey, I'm going to call, you know, a pass um, as a play. Um, and, you know, I'm expecting my, you know, my wide receiver to grab the ball. And I have an expectation of how fast he's going to run once that, that ball is snapped and, and passed out. Um, but now you could actually look at the screen and say, wait, the exertion level of this athlete based on the last 10 plays is very high. And so that may not be the right call for me to make at this point in time based on the exertion level. So as you start to combine those two things together, it actually starts to add a really interesting and new dynamic to the tactics of the game as well. So do you have cameras as well set up as well as these, you know, is it typically just, I mean, what m most of the time is it something used at practice? Most of the time it's something used at practice. So you, you think of the, like I said, we have, you know, really two core solutions, video analysis and this athlete monitoring. The athlete monitoring, 90% of the times it's used in practice. The video is mainly for games, right? So I'm 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 scouting what I'm going to do against an opponent. I'm then reviewing what I did maybe in my last game, and then in some cases I'm also reviewing what I'm doing in practice. And I'm trying to understand, you know, what what is the exertion that it took an athlete to do X in a game based on uh -huh. the tactics that I'm calling, and then is he following it up 
in practice, right? And are we actually doing what we you know we need to do for for a game? Um, and then in 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 games, I'm actually watching the video live, uh, and in some cases, I have you know I'm having the wearable data live as well. So, um, how did then you how did Catapult get involved with the XFL then? Yeah, so you know they the XFL came to us. You know we've been um, you know sort of the de facto leader in video analysis for football now for you know p- probably close to twenty years uh, here in the U.S. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, we support the NFL, we support all of the the NCAA, um, you know, football programs. And they basically came looking for a video uh, analysis solution. So they signed up with that solution uh, with us uh, fairly early on. Um, Then that moved on to, hey, you know, we actually need a solution for talent identification, right, for scouting purpose. Um, And we have a pretty comprehensive solution there as well. um, That's been, you know, utilized by the NFL to basically look at NCAA athletes coming up. Um, and so, you know, it, it made great sense for the XFL to not only look at that solution from a, you know, talent identification, but also, you know, do some comparison on what, what was available, um, you know, in the market. Um, and then third, um, you know, you know, the XFL, you know, I think I've, I've been completely impressed at how player first and technology first as a, as a league they're being, um, and they really wanted to have the best technology out there to understand, you know, how hard the athletes are working. How do you keep them healthy? Um, how do you, you know, really get them a peak position for the games? Um, and, and, and you know, they started talking to us about athlete monitoring uh, as well. So, um, you know, what was really interesting with the XFL is that they were really looking for a comprehensive single solution um, mm-hmm. so that you know, we could start to put all these data together and allow them to actually have, you know, very deep and, th- and thoughtful predictive algorithms about, you know, what's going to happen with, you know, different athletes, what's going to happen with different games. Uh, so they could start to make, you know, some really uh, smart decisions along the way. So so we we started with the video analysis and now we're, you know, uh, three solutions in with them. Oh, so is, is the plan to just have them players currently wear them in practice? Or are they actually thinking about using these things in games? Well, they will use them in both. Um, and so, you know, I think it will be really interesting to see because, you know, they'll compare what was the, you know, the workload in the game mm-hmm. and how do we look, you know, how do we compare in practice? And then also, you know, preparing for a game, here's what it looked like. And then also, you know, what what was it actually like when we got there and played, you know, uh, you know a, a real game? Uh, so they'll use it in both. Oh wow, interesting! And then, so how how is the XFL using this versus the NFL? As far as I mean, is the NFL using the same sweet stuff, or these? It sounds like maybe the XFL is do, asking a little bit more. Yeah, so I think you know, with with the NFL, uh, we typically work directly with the teams, um, and so we have you know uh, teams that are doing video, and we have teams that are doing you know, wearables. Uh, in some cases, we'll have teams that just are doing video and not wearables yet. Um, I think the difference between uh, the NFL and the XFL, it's a much more comprehensive uh, solution. And so, you know, the XFL really wanted to make sure that all the teams had this solution at their, you know, at their fingertips, um, but also that the league had some access to the data to, you know, to really understand how to think about fan engagement down the line, how to think about ruling uh, systems down the line. You know how to think about you know uh, dealing with the media. Uh, so I, I do think that they're looking to do, you know, utilize the technology in a much more comprehensive manner, uh, with the focus of you know how do we improve the game, uh, you know, uh, along the way. So are they going to use any of this data? You think for television purposes and be like you know how we have the Amazon's got the on their Thursday night football, the Amazon probabilities and stuff. Are they going to use some of this data like that during yeah, games? I, I, I don't, I don't anticipate that that's going to happen in the first season, but I, I you know, I think it's definitely, I, I think a desire of the XFL of improving, you know, how to, how to bring fans and engage fans a bit more deeper than, uh, than I think we, you know, they have in the past. Um, and, you know, I, and I always joke and I know it's going to sound silly, but, you know, from a fan engagement Probably the last great innovation on TV was the yellow, you know, first downline. Right? True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It really hasn't been anything that people kind of go, oh, it helps me really understand the data of what's happening. Um, yeah. I think with our system, both on the wearables uh, and, and the scouting and as well as on the video, I think it will it will help them 
kind of rethink that and and kind of figure out, you know, are there new ways of utilizing it with media that really helps, you know, uh, you know, and, and, and a good example, you know, I was, I was trying to explain this to my wife, like, why is, you know, this particular lineman in a team, the best player on the team? Um, it's very hard for the casual fans to understand why that lineman is maybe the best player on the team, right? And so how can we use data to to really show the impact and the force that, you know, maybe a, a one of the linemen could really impact, um, you know, in a, in a certain game or in a certain, uh, uh, in a certain play um, are things that I think the XFL are thinking about in terms of, you know, improving uh, media and fan engagement. Wow. Well, this is really interesting stuff. So uh, any other wearables you guys are coming out with other than just like the vest that has the, th I've seen pictures. It's got the vest and then like the thing on the back. Is there any other wearables that you guys are coming up with? Yeah, we, we just announced actually at CES, uh, you know, the past uh, couple of weeks um, that we've now integrated our wearables that we use for athlete monitoring uh, inside the, the ball itself. Um, oh, so okay. You know, it, it, it's been um, about a year and a half of innovation. Uh, the ball is actually, you know, uh, doesn't need to be plugged in to be charged. So it's kind of got, you know, sort of like your iPhone as you as you put in over, you know. A uh -huh. um, but what would be really interesting as, you know, as we start to improve that technology is that it also has inertial sensor position, you know, X, Y, and Z. Um, and it will start to actually be able to compare, you know, an athlete's physical attribute and the impact that it's actually having on the ball. So, you know, spiral control, uh, speed and force of the ball coming out, uh, speed of the ball coming in uh, into a wide receiver's hand. Um, and I think, you know, even even a punt or, or a field kick, you know, like what is the force being generated and how do you compare uh, different, you know, uh, kickers with it? Um, I, think, I think we'll start to create some really interesting metrics around that. Um, and so we're pretty excited by that. Well, that is... Very fascinating. So I appreciate your time, Will Lopes, Chief Executive Officer of Catapult, really bringing, I mean, the XFL keeps talking about innovation and they're really doing all this stuff. And this certainly sounds really interesting. I, and, and I know the super nerd fans would love to see some of this data, <laughs> that's for sure. So I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. You got it, Mark. Thank you so much and, uh, and have a great day. All right. You too.